South African Airways, an airline established to be Africa's leading carrier. After its establishment some 88 years ago, the airline has risen to be recognized on the international front. It is also the first African carrier to join Star Alliance even before Egypt Air and Ethiopian Airline. This is one of Africa's greatest companies that has been able to withstand a series of economic breakdowns. In this video, we will be looking at how the South African Airways began and how big it has grown in the African and international aviation space. This is Bernard and you are watching African Dream Motivation. Without wasting much time, let's begin. The story of South African Airways began about five years before it actually came into existence. In 1929, an airline was established known as Union Airways of South Africa. This was the first South African commercial airline and it came with great hopes. It operated for just five years and was highly unprofitable. In 1944, the airline went bankrupt and was taken over by the government of South Africa and renamed as South African Airways. The government took over the assets and liabilities of Union Airways on 1st February 1934. This included 40 staff members, 3 Junker F-13s, 1 DH-60 mode, 1 DH-80A plus mode, and at least Junker F-13 and Junkers A-50. After the acquisition, South African Airways was controlled by the South African Railways and Harbors Administration, which is now referred to as Transnet. The airline was ready to dominate the African continent and the world at large. Just a year after the government took over, the South African Airways made their first acquisition. On 1st February 1935, South African Airways acquired Southwest Airways, now Air Namibia. During this era, the company was really thriving, becoming one of the leading airlines in Africa. It acquired a couple of German aircrafts such as the Junkers Ju-86 and British fleet of aircraft including the Airspeed Envoys. The airline gradually increased its fleet of aircraft for passenger and cargo transport. This growth, however, made the Second World War which brought a lot of this operation to a halt. From 1st February 1934 until the start of the Second World War, South African Airways carried 118,822 passengers, 3,278 tons of air mail, and 248 tons of cargo. It also had 418 employees. On 24 May 1940, all operations of South African Airways were suspended due to the World War II. World War II brought a great shakeup in the airline industry with new and emerging airlines struggling to sustain their businesses. Contracts had to be terminated, with restrictions totally shutting down many operations of airlines. Producers of aircraft had different and more pressing needs to fulfill. American companies such as Boeing, Martin and Douglas, which were focused on large civil aircraft before the war, now became developers of bombers. This was the same with producers in Great Britain such as Vikers, Avro, Bristol and de Havilland, as well as Germany's Donius and Junkers. After the war ended, travel bans were removed and more routes opened. This caused South African Airways to convert three South African Air Force envoys to passenger layouts. They later acquired a couple of aircraft towards domestic service and also expanded their international destinations. The period from 1945 to 1952 marked tremendous growth for the company. On 10th November 1945, South African Airways achieved its long-term company goal by operating a route to Europe. They began acquiring American-made aircraft such as the Douglas DC-4 and a few others. From 1946, passengers and cargo carried increased as the company's fleet and employees grew exponentially. The Jet Age this was a period from 1953 to 1973. South African Airways continued growing quickly 
adopted significantly to changes the industry was undergoing. This era saw a collaboration between the British Overseas Airway Corporation and South African Airways to present the Havilland Comet, adding up to the fleet of the South African Airways. On 1st July 1960, an order of the American aircraft Boeing 707 arrived in South Africa. Many of these additions were to enable long route travels since South African Airways was experiencing denials of using the airspace of neighboring countries. This was as a result of opposition to the apartheid ruling in South Africa by many countries in Africa and around the world. Irrespective of these restrictions, the company kept expanding through other strategic means. The airline opened a route to Asia with Boeing 707 flight to Hong Kong through an intermediate stop at Seychelles Island in June 1974. In 1980, the airline again began a non-stop flight to Taiwan using Boeing 747SP. Their services to Asia made South Africa one of the few countries around the world to be recognized by the government of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Getting to the end of the 20th century, the South African Airways began a rebranding journey. This was after the country's heroic leader, Nelson Mandela, was released from prison. Many countries embraced the new leadership and therefore, the airline had a new acceptance. So many countries who were previously hostile to them opened their arms wide. In the late 90s, the airline took advantage of the growth of the internet and began an online ticket sales. They went further to form an alliance with South African Airlink, an airline based in Johannesburg, South Africa. And also another alliance came through with the South African Express Airways. All these alliances and partnerships were strategically to enhance Africa and world domination. In 2001, South African Airways started a co-share agreement with Delta Airlines this allowed the airline to print non-stop Boeing 747 flights from Atlanta to Johannesburg with return flights operated via Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport, Florida. This co-share agreement placed the airline on a higher pedigree when it comes to international travels. Fast forward to 2004, a great development was about to occur which will place South African Airways on a much higher level, but in contrast, it stood a chance of destroying the three-year business relationship the airline has had with Delta Airlines. In March 2004, South African Airways announced its application to join Star Alliance. They were accepted into Star Alliance on 10 April 2006. This immediately ended the co-share agreement they had with Delta Airlines because Delta Airlines was part of SkyTeam, which is also an airline alliance that is in rivalry with Star Alliance. The co-share agreement between South African Airways and Delta Airlines was terminated on 6 June 2006. Looking at the bigger picture, joining Star Alliance was a greater gain. This means the South African Airways the first African airline to join the alliance group. In May 2007, the management of South African Airways deemed it necessary to restructure its operations with profitability in mind. Therefore, an 18-month comprehensive restructuring program was developed, and according to the then CEO, Kaya Ingwala, this came as a result of several reasons, including uncompetitive ownership and aircraft lease costs, excessive headcount and full price volatility, and a few others. This program was primarily directed towards cutting costs and focusing on quality service delivery. By June 2009, the program was so instrumental that the company was able to save 2.5 billion rands. With the airline's success in joining Star Alliance and proving to have what it takes to dominate the continent of Africa and penetrate into competitive markets like Europe and America, Let's look at how successful South African Airways actually became. After 88 years of its establishment, the airline has grown to become one of Africa's dominant careers. To actually have a clear picture of how successful the airline has been, 
Let's take a look at what South African Airways is made up of and how that has impacted its competitive edge in the industry. Subsidiaries South African Airways has established many connections and business deals with a couple of airlines worldwide. Notable among them are South African Airlines and South African Express. Also on 30th October 2006, an airline was established called Mango Airlines. This was a South African low-cost airline based at OR Tambo International Airport and was a subsidiary of South African Airways. Mango Airlines began its booking at midnight on the same day it was launched. The first flight took place on 15th November 2006 and began growing gradually. It is owned 100% by South African Airways but operates independently as a low-cost airline with its own board and balance sheet. In 2017, it had 2.9 million passengers carried and 713 employees with a fleet of aircraft of 10. Even though its focus cities are found in South Africa, it has a hub in Zanzibar, Tanzania. This was key to South African Airways' expansionary measures to dominate the African continent by expanding their coverage locally. Passenger Airline South African Airways has been Africa's leading airline in terms of total number of passengers carried from the year 2000 to date. In fact, from the year 2005 to 2017, no African airline had more passengers than South African Airways. In 2017, a total of 9.7 million passengers were carried by South African Airways, with 6.8 million coming from the main airline and the remaining 2.9 million from their subsidiary Mango Airlines. When it comes to number of passengers carried, it is one of the airlines in Africa enjoying tremendous success. Cargo and Logistics For any airline to succeed in cargo and logistics, it needs a formidable air cargo terminal. When I talk about an air cargo terminal, I mean an airport building that has the facility to receive and distribute express, freight or mail carried by aircraft. South African Airways operates in five air cargo terminals in South Africa, of which four of them are owned and controlled by the airline, and the remaining one is leased from Duke Trade Port Holding. With regions outside South Africa, they have a partnership with highly experienced ground handling agents to ensure an end-to-end -end route network. From 2006 to date, South African Airways have carried on an average of over 150 tons of cargo. This is an outstanding performance. South African Airways Technical This unit has been in operation for over 80 years. Its main function is to provide aircraft maintenance services to a number of commercial airlines in South Africa, Africa and the world at large. Some of these services include airframe checks, engine overhaul, mechanical components, avionics and line maintenance and a couple of others. The main operating base is located in Johannesburg, South Africa and it goes further to have a line maintenance operation at most major airports in Africa. They have a support structure which comprises of engineering, supply chain, logistics, quality assurance, aircraft painting, major structural repairs, in-flight entertainment and cabin installation and a lot more. Their technical team is one of the best in the world. Air Chefs this is one of the leading catering companies in South Africa. Air Chefs has the capacity to produce 44,000 meals per day. They also provide in-flight catering services to South African Airways, South African Express, Mango Airlines, as well as many other local and international airlines. In November 2016, Air Chefs added Swiss International Airlines to the group of airlines they serve. Apart from serving these airlines, the company also offers catering services to corporate clients and many other niches. The company has 1,200 employees and offers high-quality services to airlines and non-airline catering demands. Training and Development This department of every airline is highly essential because to be able to compete with high-class airlines, you need an advanced workforce. 
South African Airways has a high standard training program available to the masses. They have a cabin crew training program which has been highly effective. They also have airport operations training as well as commercial training which are to equip ground staff with the necessary skills and competencies to run operations smoothly. Fleet size. For an aircraft to come this far, it definitely needs some powerful fleet to make the magic happen. As of 2017, the airline had a total of 64 aircraft. Also, the airline has operated over 270 aircraft since its establishment. As of January 2022, South African Airways had the following aircraft in service. 3 Airbus A319-100 2 Airbus A320-200 1 Airbus A330-300 and 1 Airbus A340-300. As the industry is gradually opening up after COVID-19 lockdowns and restrictions, it is very likely that more aircraft will join the fleet very soon. South African Airways Museum It was very fascinating to come across the fact that the airline has a museum. This museum is based in Rand's Airport in Germiston and it houses a collection of airline artifacts which ruled the industry during the good old days. It also hosts a library with over 1,000 aviation-related books. Among its collection of static historic artifacts are three Boeing B74200, Boeing 747SP, and Boeing 737-200. It has become an outstanding tourist attraction, bringing in people from all over the world to experience the rich history of the South African Airways. In 2001, South African Airways won the Best Cargo Airline to Africa Awards from Air Cargo News, and this was proof of their dominance in the early 2000s. After all these achievements, when we still want to talk about success in the airline industry, we need to go a step further to have a firm grip of the narration. In assessing how successful a company is, it is very important to factor in profitability. This is where things turn a bit sour. When you look at the financial statement of South African Airways for the last 10 years, you will find out that the company has never made any profit. You may be wondering how it is even possible for such a big airline to operate for over 80 years and still struggle to attain profitability. It will even baffle your mind to hear that on 5th December 2019, the government of South Africa announced that the airline will enter into bankruptcy protection since it has not been able to turn a profit for a very long time and was running out of money. It even got worse in 2020 after COVID-19 hit the world by surprise. To understand how this came about, check out our video entitled The Rise and Fall of South African Airways. Kindly click on the card above or the first link in the description or comment section to watch now. Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are new here, kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. See you in our next video. Until then, have a wonderful day.